All right, at the very end of the last demo, we were comparing the, um, the inked line work that I scanned in the computer and then live traced in Illustrator to the, the pencil line work that I traced over in Illustrator using the blob brush. And the blob brush on the left here gives me a smoother line. This looks really smooth, but compared to the blob brush, it's not quite as elegant. So another solution is I went and I opened, so at the very end of the last demo, the, um, the live traced version. And I'll go back in space here, back in time here. So there it is. There's that slightly wonkier W. And then I simply went to um, Object, Simplify, and And long story short, it smoothed it out. I just set the simplify settings a little bit to be a little bit less uh, precise about the curve precision and the angle threshold. Now it helped me with almost everything, smoothing all the letter forms out. That W is now nice and clean, just as much as the blob brush. Where it didn't help me is the one place in my design where I want a sharp point. And that's at the corner of the mouth. So to get that back, what do I do? Well, I go to the pencil tool and I'm going to simply draw in a sharp angle there. Right. And then it might have not helped me on this curve, though I'm not sure. <laughs> that curve might have been like that before. But I want this mouth to be pretty generic looking, just as a simple curve. So the fewer anchor points, the better. Yeah, now that's looking, looking more acceptable. All right. So I went through that whole process just to kind of show you the difference between uh, bringing it in. I might add a few more anchors here bringing it in as a pencil sketch versus as an inked outline. And then where you want to pay attention to things. And if you ever need to simplify it, it's easy to simplify. So let me just show you what that looks like again. Um, I'll draw something with the blob brush that's kind of really jagged and weird, right? Then if I select just that and I go up to Object, Path, Simplify. If I move the, the Simplify Path sliders all the way to the right, it's exactly what I, I had at the beginning. But if I take them down a little bit on each side, it will simplify my image. And it just basically means remove anchor points and average out the, the curves used with the, uh, the handles with the Bezier handles. I like it because I can show the original and you can see how far it gets off of the original. So this does make significant differences. But if you do it to your whole illustration and then check for places where you lost something you liked, it can be helpful. You also have the option to just change it to straight lines. <laughs> it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this case. Oh, there we go. So if you don't want any curves at all between your angles, this you can use Simplify to convert your curves into straights, which is kind of cool. So from curve to straight. <laughs> so there's a lot of just interesting options in Illustrator available to you. OK, I'm going to save this again just update my ink line work. And now I'm gonna show you how you start coloring in Photoshop. We're just following that, that uh, handout that I showed you at the beginning of the demos today. So I'm gonna have this open in the corner. It's just my PDF handout. And now that we have our vector li line work, the first thing we need to do is add flat local color. Now there are a lot of ways you can do this. There are kind of smart, informed ways, and then there are the ways most people do it. So let me show you the ways most people do it. 
and then why you want to do it a different way. You don't want to open up your EPS in Photoshop, right? Even though that's the way most people do it, right? Click open in Photoshop. Why? Because that makes you rasterize it. And just like we did with the logo, the whole point of making a vector for your line work is so that it's not limited to a certain pixel resolution. So don't do that. Instead, you go to Photoshop and you say File New. And we're going to pretend that we're making a print ready illustration at least 11 by 14 because this is going to be used for our poster. So I'm going to use, let's see, this one's 18 by 24 inches at 350. Let's use that. Plenty big, white background, RGB settings. Now I can bring in my newest smoothed saved at 1221 just one minute ago EPS. By dragging and dropping the EPS from the desktop, it comes in as a smart object. I don't need to make it huge, but that means that as a smart object, notice that little icon in the layer window, I can't erase it. I can't edit it without rasterizing it. I can skew it and, and um, transform it a little bit, but I, I, at this point, I don't want to. And what it will do as a smart object is it will automatically rasterize to whatever the native format is. All right. Next, what I'm going to do is add local color. So I know that there's a lot of blue in this. In fact, I did a little test. Just with my inking pen. And I, I kind of figured out, okay, what areas could be filled in to keep my design? So these are the areas I'm going to fill. Maybe I'll op keep this uh, open. It's kind of like a stencil, right? And even though it doesn't work well as a logo, these are the areas that I can safely paint in with color. So how do we do that? Well, I want to leave the mouth black, but everything else I want to have filled in with color, except the empty space. So I'm going to create a new layer that's between my black line work and my white background. I'm going to call this my flat local color layer. Local color simply means the color something is, no matter what the lighting. So for water, I'm going to make that local color blue. Right. I'm going to lock the background and call it flat white background. I shouldn't ever paint on that because eventually I'll turn it off because I want a free floating spot illustration. And then my line work, I want to lock that as well because I don't accidentally want to warp it or change it or rasterize it. The only layer I want to work on at the beginning is my flat local color. I have my swatches open and you can get to that under window, swatches. And the default swatches are the original kind of printing colors made with CMYK presses in the first half of the 20th century. So they're, they're a nice beginning. And again, this is kind of the, the easy way to get started, not necessarily the best way. So I'm going to pick a blue color. And as soon as you overlap with the swatch, no matter what tool you're on, I'm going to be on the magic wand tool with contiguous turned on. But no matter what tool you're on, it will go to the ink dropper tool, and I'm going to pick a color. So I kind of like this light green cyan, right? And now, if I use um, the magic wand tool in my locked vector line work, I can pick a shape like that shape. And it will highlight within my lines, and there will be no discrepancy, right? It will go right to the outline because that's a smart layer. It's either black or it's not. Okay, then I'm going to move that selection because remember selections are movable between layers. I'm going to move that to my flat local color layer and I am then going to use not the gradation tool but the paint bucket tool and drop in that color. Right? Then I can hit command D to deselect. And what does that do? 
it puts a flat color behind that one space. Now this is easy to do because I'm just using the magic wand and I'm filling in with local color the, the, the blues I want to use. So I'm going to use another blue here, go to the paint bucket, but look, if I try to use the paint bucket on my locked layer, it won't let me. That's a good thing. I need to go to my flat color layer and drop it in. Go to the magic wand again, pick another one. But I need to be on my vector layer. Magic wand again, pick another one, go to my flat color layer, pick a flat color, These can always be modified later. Drop it in. Use the magic wand. Go to my vector layer. Pick a shape that's completely contained. Go to my flat color layer. Pick a color. Oh, let's go lighter this time. Let's go back to this. And drop it in with the paint bucket. No, I don't want that. Now, if at any time I want to change my color, I can just hold down Option and steal from a color I've already put down. What's another option? Let's see, this shape in here. Now, you'll notice that these colors are pretty limiting. These default swatches. And I might decide, well, I want that color in there, and then on the outside of this kind of tongue -ish shape, I want a lighter blue. Use my magic wand, select that shape, go to the flat color layer. Let's pick this. Drop that in. All right. But then I might think, well, that's not a light blue enough. So I can always click on the on the foreground color and find options. And I'm still only on web colors. I'm keeping it pretty simple. But that's a really nice feature. All right, now let's see what else have I got. I've got this one. What am I gonna do with that? Pick that color, let's drop it in. Oh, gotta make sure I'm on the flat color layer. So this arrangement of things, like so many other things we've done, it's so important to have things organized correctly as a digital project. This arrangement keeps you from making big mistakes and accidentally painting on the wrong layer. And what if I want to do multiples at one time? Well, I have the magic wand. I'm on my vector. I can hold down command. Sorry, I can hold down shift, rather, and add to my selection. So I'm going to do the eyes. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do... Um, Let's try this whole shape. Nope, that doesn't work because that goes to the outside. So I'm going to try to do all the shapes up here for the most part, except for the tiny ones. All these down here. And remember, selections move. So now I can fill those with any color I want. Let's go with a darker blue and just drop them in. And it will do it to all of them all at once. OK, so so far, that's the, the flat color I've done. And so far, that's my illustration with the black line work on top of it. Now, this is where it gets a little trickier. What if I want to flat color in? this shape. But the problem is it's open. It's open right there and right there <laughs> so that the whole thing fills in. Well, I have a few options. It would be difficult to use a lasso to deselect all of this. So this is what I tend to do. I go to my uh, vector layer and I might do something like deselect and make a duplicate of that vector that I then rasterize. And then I immediately go for a color overlay and I'm gonna set it to red so I know that the